I feel like it's been 84 years, and I don't mean that in a good way, but there has been certain things that I guess transpire over the existence of this game that really showed me a bit of insult to injury, I suppose. Adding salt to the wound per se, and marinating that, that gaujan moule that they tend to make. What do I mean, exactly? What's been going on? It seems as War Thunder evolves and basically becomes a new game in itself every time it updates, it, there seems to be a sort of pattern, a familiar pattern that arises. I've been playing the game for eight years, I really should have stopped, I probably got about, about 8,000, maybe 9,000 hours in total, not quite 10,000 hours, and I'm not a pro player either. But if War Thunder doesn't continue to add content, it basically kills its own momentum. And what do I mean by this? There is a feedback loop. Essentially, one thing happens, it leads to another action, and then that action leads to another action, and it sort of goes round in a massive circle. So where do we really start in, in this analysis of what the cycle of War Thunder tends to be? One, it is... You know, there's been content that's been already put out. It's sort of a dry month. There hasn't been anything for a little while. Content creators are covering and community members are covering issues within the game itself. We're talking about the problems and that exist and some of the major issues we'd like to see addressed. Hundreds of videos out there about all sorts of different topics ranging from all the game modes to individual vehicles themselves. That's okay, or this is broken, or this thing's, you know, a problem, or this is an issue, or this is a community issue, or this is a whatever. Doesn't matter. Then, sort of as time progresses, we sort of run the mill of those type of content for about a month, month and a half, before we actually start getting rumours. People go, well, I'd like to see the War Thunder. What would do you think is going to come into War Thunder? And the hype train and the sort of rumour mill starts running a wild. And obviously then we get rumours of what's coming and, you know, everyone's trying to ask, when is, what, what do you think is coming to the next patch? So that's really stage two. But all of a sudden, the first dev blog appears. And immediately, any conversation, disc uh, you know, regarding any sort of conversation about any in-game topic or issue, is swept under the rug and everyone focuses on what is going to be the next thing. When is the dev server? When is the next dev blog? What are we going to get? When does the server come out? When can the content creators give us exclusive access to some of the things? When can we have memes? When can we get this new whole entire hype train rolling? And there is a period of about, a, you know, two to three weeks before, as I say, release regular patches and, and dev blog notes, before we actually get to the first iteration of the dev server, where they announce the content, content creators cover those kind of type of content, and then it goes silent for a little while. Meanwhile, everyone's like, oh, this vehicle, that vehicle, this vehicle's absolutely broken, etc, etc. And the cycle continues. This is where we hit stage three. And keep in mind, any of this previously mentioned might happen in a three-month period, it might happen in a one-month period. But it doesn't necessarily matter. It's every quarter, whenever there's a new update that releases. And so, we go through the first dev blogs, and then we go through the dev servers, and then after the dev servers, we finally get a patch release. That's pretty cool. You know, I might actually get on War Thunder, and I might actually play a little bit, see if we can unlock some low-tier stuff, and maybe we'll go and have a look at what, what they've added, and have a bit of a peruse around, and maybe we'll play a couple of matches, and we'll see the player count go above 100,000, and... And it's all fantastic for the first couple of weeks, you know, everyone's happy, and then people start finding problems. You know, the content creators are making their videos on the new aircraft, or the new tanks, or the ships, or whatever, the new maps. And then the content starts to dry out. There's only so much new content that you probably already have covered, based on the dev server coverage, or if you haven't covered it in a new, you know, sort of a news capacity, or if there haven't been thousands of memes created about a certain vehicle or an overperforming or underperforming vehicle and, you know, having a great old time, you know, meme culture and all. And then you discover that there might be issues with the game. There might be game-breaking bugs, there might be game-breaking features, glitches, sound issues, graphical issues. There could be exploitative mechanics in place that the devs haven't necessarily forgotten about. Or they have forgotten about because spaghetti code and War Thunder is ultimately a War Thunder problem. Say it again with me. War Thunder is ultimately a perpetual problem that goes round in circles. Can you see where this video is going? And then you get a brief period of downtime where people are either grinding or just playing the ga a game casually, which is fantastic. I ain't gonna judge you for that. And then we get a new event. Well, either it's a build-a-thon or a crafting vehicle or it's a unlock this vehicle by get X amount of kills or whatever 
or you have to play this in this type of event. And you know, that keeps people tired over for a little while. But that isn't the end old story, is it? You know, things tend to calm down. People pull up their meme gameplay. People put up their gameplay of different things. Everyone starts talking about issues within War Thunder. And we start back at square one. War Thunder relies on the content creators for free advertising. That's, that's a given. They rely on us to promote the game. They rely on us to discuss some of the issues or the game breaking, whatever. They rely on a lot of the community and community feedback. Whether they use it or not, they haven't been, obviously. Look at the BR decompressions recently. I should have say compressions. Which leads to a negative feedback loop. You have a bunch of issues that haven't been solved that the community wants fixed. But you also can't get 10 content creators together to make a list of 10 things they'd like to fix within the game. You've got developers that are claiming they can't necessarily fix a certain aspect because of spaghetti code or some other valid reason which inherently kills hype for a particular game mode. You then have your core existing numbers and players analysing what's happening and the whole entire thing is a massive fucking circus. Because ultimately, is this a community issue? And we fostered this relationship with War Thunder and Garzan itself, allowing us to sort of be in this perpetual loop? Or is it a developer issue where War Thunder needs to continually add content as a free-to-play game, because that is its core concept, because if it doesn't, and, and even if it does a quality of life patch, there is no way that that would, you know, bring in enough monetary gain for enough fixes. Now, on the flip side, it takes resources and it takes commitment by a developer team in order to produce a game. I, I guarantee you that takes time, which is why they're so sporadic with patches. But, at the end of the day, this is an evolutionary cycle. What comes next? Who knows? And I guess we'll have to wait and see what happens this year. I can't believe that took me basically seven minutes to explain a perpetual cycle in a loop. Anyway, my name is Ash, thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.